And a welcome here to Wake of Call with Dan Tortora on wakeofcalldt.com, your one-stop sports shop, and on mixlr.com backslash wakeofcalldt. Happy to be here with you and hanging out here inside of the Cafe Kubal Studios. Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora. Today is proud to bring you an entire show dedicated to fantasy football. That's right, every Wednesday from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. Eastern Time, you have the Fantasy Football Power Hour. Not one of, not a, but the Fantasy Football Power Hour. And in this broadcast of Wake Up Call, the Fantasy Football Power Hour takes up the entire Two hours here inside of the Cafe Kubal Studios. Cafe Kubal on 3501 James Street, 324 West Water Street, 208 North Townsend Street, as well as uh, you can find it on 401 South Salina Street, all in Syracuse, inside of Galasano's Children's Hospital, and you can find them on 343 Fayette Street in Manlius in their newest location, their drive through location, on Sweetheart Corners at the corner of Route 11, and Taft Road. So a lot of great stuff here on Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora, and we appreciate you being here, hanging out with us, where sports truly meets that thing called life. Mike and I giving you a full-fledged mock draft. It's Mike and I against the computers of the world, and we have the opportunity to bring this to you, which I'm very excited about and very much looking forward to. So with that being said, inside of the Fantasy Football Power Hour, proudly presented by the Wildcat Sports Pub, it is my honor and my privilege to welcome my co-host of all things fantasy football, Mr. Mike Sofka of Hall of Fame FantasyFootball.com, as well as our joint venture of the Winning Fantasy Football Group that you can find by simply going to Facebook and typing in Winning Fantasy Football. So with that being said, Mr. Sofka, how are we doing today? Doing wonderful. How are you, Dan? I'm doing very well. And, and Mike, we're getting ready to do our draft here, and we have the uh, room set up. So I'm going to go ahead and start the draft. This is an 18, this is an 18 uh, group, uh, 18 altogether, 18 picks uh, total, 18 roster. That's the word I was looking for. 18 player roster draft. And so we have this set up. This actually says 15 rounds. So let me see if I can adjust this here adjust our draft settings but i may not be able to and that's okay if i can't but uh we have one quarterback two running backs two wide receivers a tight end two flex which is a wide receiver a running back or a tight end we have a kicker and a defense and that is going to be uh, what this looks like and then we're going to have a few players on our bench so it'll be a little bit shorter of a draft here and i'm actually going to uh, make sure that that we got this here so that we can uh, actually reset this. So I'm going to I'm going to reset the draft and send it off to you, Mike, so you have it because I want to make sure that we can put these draft settings the way we want them. So it's a PPR snake draft. It's a 10 team draft. There's a minute and a half per pick, and a one quarterback, two running backs, two wide receivers, one tight end, two flex, one kicker, one D, which gives you 10 that will be starting. And then your bench is going to have eight. And I'm going to go ahead and claim this. So I'm going to update that. I'm going to go ahead and claim the third pick here. Oh, that's 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 Mike. So Mike's the sixth pick. All right. right so did you, did you send me a new link? I am sending you a link currently. So Mike will be locked in with us here, and we will get started going on this draft. And very excited to finally get to do this with you all. And so we have brought you our running backs, our running back list. We brought you our quarterback list, our wide receiver, as well as uh, tight ends. And we've told you exactly what we think is going to, uh, you know, each of the positions all across the country. We've given you information on them and broken them down. And now it's time for us to bring you a fantasy mock draft, a full-fledged mock draft, which I'm ecstatic to be able to bring to you. So we're bringing that in here right now. And so you can see it. I'm going to claim this spot, and we're going to try and get going here. So let's see if it'll let me claim that. And then there's the draft, and we should be able to start this thing shortly as we have Mike in here already. So uh, we should be able to get this thing going and started, and let's see if we can get it all set. So we go in here, and we start a draft, and... We got to bring in Mr. Sofka. So, yeah, a lot of a uh, lot of good stuff here coming up on Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora. We appreciate you being here inside of the Cafe Kubal Studios. And uh, Mike, you just got a new link sent to you, so we can get started. 
And so we have uh, the draft here on Wake of Call with Dan Tortora. As you can see, a snake draft PPR, and you can see all the pieces here, the roster settings, as I spoke about before. We have eight, and then the draft order. Mike and I will be claiming this, so I'm going to claim spot three, and Mike will claim his spot. We're just picking random spots, and neither one of us is going to pick number one. So we'll be in here and ready to draft here uh, momentarily inside of the Fantasy Football Power Hour, proudly presented by the Wildcat Sports Web. Okay, Mike is in. So just so you know, the other ten, the other eight spots in this 10-team PPR draft are going to be taken up by the computer. So the computer will make their picks, and those picks will come immediately. And as you see them come through, so we're drafting currently right now, and you can see that the picks that have come through are Christian McCaffrey and Elvin Kamara. So it's my pick here, and I'm going to go with Derrick Henry as the third overall pick. And so you'll see my Derrick Henry pick come in, and then Tyreek Hill and Saquon Barkley were drafted uh, I will I will pause this draft uh, as we go. I will do my best to uh, pause it here and give us an opportunity to take a look at what everybody's picking. So Mike is up on the draft right now. Yeah, go ahead and pause it real quick. Go ahead and pause it? Okay. Yeah, pause it after each pick. Okay. By us. All right, and I'm looking at I'm looking at how I can pause this. So let's see here. Uh, let's see here. If it allows me the bell, no, okay. So, oh, there we go. I can pause it. All right, we're paused. All right, I just want to talk about a couple of things real quick here. That, of course, Christian McCaffrey's number one across the board. Alvin Kamara, I've seen at two, but I've seen him as also as low as five lately. And Derrick Henry, Derrick Henry, I have at five. Um, this is a PPR league, right? Yep. Yeah, that that's the difference there. A lot of people will have him up a, a, a spot or so higher. But, I mean, in the first round, one or two players off, you might not go that bad. Tyreek Hill I have at seven. I've seen him as high as four where he got picked there, but I've also seen him as low as 14. So then you – then uh, let's see, Barkley. Barkley I have at – four and i've seen him as high as two and as low as 10 so what was your thoughts in taking tyreek hill at four as opposed to a running back oh no uh, you took derrick henry right? yeah, Derek henry. i see yep i see yeah yeah well, i think it's a little high for tyreek hill what do you think um yeah i mean looking looking at this uh tyreek hill you know what i think i think people are drafting on uh, you know they're drafting on his speed and so for him to be the first running back or pardon me wide receiver off the board you know, I, I think it is high. I mean, Christian McCaffrey is coming off of an injury. There's a lot of hope that he is going to be able to be exactly what people thought he was last year. It's funny because this is how the drafts kind of went last year. He was the consensus number one. Uh, Elvin Kamara, a good guy to catch out of the backfield and run the ball. Derrick Henry's just a beast. I mean, a guy who can pick up 2,000 yards in a season. So that was my reason for picking him. And Saquon Barkley, another guy coming off of injury. So I get that. But Tyreek Hill, I feel like it's 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 high. Uh, you know, I guess the hope is maybe he'll catch some, you know, dink and dunk passes and be able to take those either out of the backfield or from two yards out and be able to run with them. I think people are hoping that uh, Pat Mahomes will get him the ball kind of like a running back and then allow him to go with it. So I can understand, you know, speed wise and because he's really the guy. But at the same time, I, I would I would go with more traditional wide receivers and I wouldn't go that high on them. So I think Tyree kills a little bit early for me. All right, all right. Well, with all that in mind, I'm going to take the player that's ranked number two right. on my rankings, and I'm at, and there you go, I took Delvin Cook right there. Okay, so Mike going with Delvin Cook, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, let it come back to Mike, and then we'll pause it again so that we can see who took who. So we're going to pause the draft here. Uh, Mike took Delvin Cook. That was the other decision that I had. If I didn't take, <clears throat> if I didn't take Derrick Henry, I was going to go with Delvin Cook. Uh, Jonathan Taylor taken right after Delvin Cook. I can understand that. His rookie numbers were very impressive last season. Uh, Nick Chubb, of course, going off the board. I think he's going to fall in a few places. Uh, Ezekiel Elliott going next. And then Devontae Adams coming off the board. 
which left Stefan Diggs for the uh, snake. We go 1 to 10, 10 to 1 for people who have never seen these before. And so uh, Team 10, which is by the computer, took Devontae Adams and Stefan Diggs, uh, two fantastic players. Devontae really uh, contingent on if Aaron Rodgers is going to be there and, and what he's going to do while he is there. And then Stefan Diggs, a great pickup. Uh, Travis Kelsey, the first tight end taken off the board. I feel like this is kind of early. I know it's in round two and it's 10 teams, but still feels early. And then uh, Joe Mixon, who's done some good things in Cincinnati. And DK Metcalf was taken before Tyler Lockett, which, you know, in my uh, assessment of drafts, once one is taken, I think the other will be taken at some point shortly after. So, Mike, with knowing those are the picks, and we're back to you, what are your thoughts? Yeah, you know, I I, would, I even thought about taking Kelsey on the way on at, for my first round pick, but I had to take he was just there. I had him number two. Then I hoped Kelsey would make it back to me, and of course he didn't. That's okay. There's some other good options that are going to be above the path there. I like the Nick Chubb pick. I think it was a stretch, though, there. I think you might have gotten him on the way back, but neither here nor there. You know, I have some choices to make here because I can go another running back, which is very popular this year, of course. And then I can go with this guy right here, who I'm going to take because I like to spread it out. And there's not much difference in the greeting between these two guys, but I'm going to take DeAndre Hopkins here. And the reason for that is I'm starting to round out my roster. At this point in the draft, I'm going with the highest-ranking player. And the next highest-ranking player I have after him, I, I won't disclose yet because you'll pick two picks later, and I'll, I'll tell you what that is. So let's see here. DeAndre Hopkins, there we go. And DeAndre Hopkins was actually going to be uh, my next pick. So I can understand that wholeheartedly because that was going to be – my pick, my first receiver off the uh, board on my list. And then uh, Aaron Jones. Go ahead. Aaron Jones was the other guy. I was, it was almost a coin flip with over DeAndre Hopkins, and he got picked right after me, if you see. Yeah, yeah. So we see uh, DeAndre Hopkins uh, going, and then Aaron Jones and J.K. Dobbins. And so for me, uh, this is, this is going to be uh, interesting as far as where I want to go with this, but I'm going to lean on Calvin Ridley here who I know uh, his fantasy numbers have been have been really good for the three seasons he's been in the NFL, but he is also without uh, Julio Jones. So I didn't want to have to make that pick, but he's obviously a good pick to make if I have to make a pick. So I'm okay with that. I can rock with that, and I can roll with that. So uh, nothing wrong with taking him there at, you know, at the place that I got him, which gives me another receiver. Uh, Justin Jefferson also uh, going here, there was another guy I looked at, and I was really considering taking Pat Mahomes, which is kind of sad that I, I didn't have the opportunity to do that. So, uh, you know, it's something that it, it happens. It's it's how it is here, you know, as, as things get taken up and people get chosen. So that was another move that I was looking to make, and, you know, that, that was a very close one for me. But I'm going to make this pick because I do think he's the number two overall quarterback, and I'm going to take Josh Allen. Yeah, I like Josh Allen. I like Josh Allen a lot. Um, I, I, I don't, he, you know, he probably won't, he might not make it back to you at, at this point, but I would have waited just a tad bit longer. But then I would have waited a tad bit longer on my own, too, and, and look what happens. And that's the beauty of the way I try to approach these drafts. Yeah, I, yeah, I want George Kittle. You know, coming in the draft, yeah, I'll take that. I'll take Kelsey. But if these guys don't fall to you, don't worry. You know, that's that's why we rank. That's why we project. You're just going to be stronger in another area. So I just go with pretty much like the NFL does, you know, next man up. I just look at the next name on my board this early in the draft. This early in the draft, the first four or five rounds, I'm thinking the best possible player. You know, regardless of position, you know, last round was a coin flip for me with Hopkins and and uh, Aaron Jones. And I decided because I had Hopkins, I had a better feel for Hopkins just barely by, I'll, get, I'll tell you how close it was. It was by one-tenth of a point average. So, you know, that's pretty close. I mean, that's not even, that's just over one point for the whole season. So at this point where I'm at, I'm going to have to take another running back. I got another coin flip situation between a wide receiver 
and a running back, but I'm going to take running back Antonio Gibson here because PPR league especially, he can catch the ball out of the backfield. I, I think he's going to have dynamite here. Yeah, so Mike going ahead and taking that pick, and so that's uh, put him with Antonio Gibson, and I'm going to pause it here for a second again as we look at the picks. So uh, I am the third pick. You can see wake-up call here on the board, and Mike is the sixth pick. You see Gator Mike. Uh, Mike took Antonio Gibson, and then Darren Waller came off the board. Three tight ends off the board. Uh, They're color-coded by position, so tight ends in orange. Travis Kelsey, George Kittle, and Darren Waller are off. Uh, Najee Harris taken uh, pretty pretty early here. Well, I shouldn't say pretty early. There's a bunch of running backs taken, but there's a lot of faith in him, I should say. He was taken before DeAndre Swift and before Clyde Edwards-Hilaire, and then Michael Thomas was taken in the fourth round. You see him drop uh, without Drew Brees there, and with a very confusing year last year where He was supposed to be the guy, and then he was hurt, but was he really hurt? But was it COVID? But was he unhappy? So I figured he would drop it. He might be traded. He might might be getting traded. I heard, uh, you know, it's not really out there, but I've heard they're they're shopping him. Yeah, so, I mean, that's that's another place for us to uh, to really look at. And I figured he would drop. I really did. And uh, to see him drop to the fourth round is kind of interesting here because, again, we're playing up against the uh, computer, and the computer – is a very smart computer, as you can see what it's been drafting. Uh, Josh Jacobs then next, Miles Sanders and Keenan Allen, which brings us back to Mike. A lot of running backs off the board. You see more green than anything else. Uh, Christian McCaffrey, Alvin Kamara, Derrick Henry, Saquon Barkley, Delvin Cook, Jonathan Taylor, Nick Chubb, Ezekiel Elliott, Joe Mixon, Aaron Jones, J.K. Dobbins, Austin Eckler, Cam Akers, Antonio Gibson, Najee Harris, DeAndre Swift, Clyde Edwards, Alaire, Josh Jacobs, and Miles Sanders in that order. Which brings us back to Mike. Mike, what is your next pick? Well, this is a tough one. And by the way, my, the one that was a coin flip for me last round was Michael Thomas and Antonio Gibson. And I didn't want to take Michael Thomas, so I'm glad, <laughs> I'm glad he got picked. I didn't want to. Paste, I mean, you know, I might, I might have taken him here if he had to drop three more spots here. But you know that again. I'm, when you're making a pick. You're, it's like we talked about before, you know, if you're not two weeks ahead, you're a week behind. It's like playing chess. You're trying to figure out who the other guys are going to pick, but you're trying to have one or two names at the tip of your tongue ready to go just in case. I happen to think that there's a, a, a couple issues with my next couple picks here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take a receiver here that I'm high on. Uh, I, I think I think Terry McLaurin is going to have a heck of a year. That's why I'm taking Terry McLaurin there. It was between him and Allen Robinson, and it was one other player I'll tell you here shortly. Yeah, so Terry McLaurin taken off the list here. I've seen him. Uh, people uh, trust in him. Uh, Mike Evans goes off next, and then uh, and Amari Cooper, uh, felt the first Dallas Cowboy wide receiver to be taken, falls this low in the draft, which is kind of interesting. And so you see that I have Derrick Henry, Kelvin Ridley, and uh, Josh Allen are my picks that I have currently so far. Running backs have gone off this list very, very much so. So I am going to uh, go with Chris Carson on this pick. Uh, It was between three different running backs, and I'm going to go. I'm going with Carson to give to give an opportunity here. I mean, I, I honestly think. I mean, the thing is, if he stays healthy, he's dangerous. But it's an if. He is a very dangerous guy, good for PPR as well. And Travis Etienne was one of my one of my guys I was looking at, as well as uh, another guy that was on this list. So I have Derrick Henry, and I have Chris Carson as my running backs, and I have Calvin Ridley as my wide receiver, and I have Josh Allen, which puts me in a place to take a look at bringing a receiver into town. And the receiver that I'm going to go with, I'm going to go a little bit out of order, I'm going to go with Adam Thielen at this pick. It was between him and a couple other guys. And after Thielen goes Allen Robinson and Chris Godwin, the computer uh, kind of reading my brain at this point and, and taking, taking those guys when they took them. So that leaves us with Mike here, and I'll pause the draft as we take a look back at the draft. And uh, round number four, Michael Thomas, Josh Jacobs, Miles Sanders, Keenan Allen, a run there of four wide receivers, Keenan Allen, Terry McLaurin, uh, Mike Evans, and Austin, uh, Amari Cooper, pardon me. I took Chris Carson, and then Kyle Pitts went, Another tie, fourth tight end off the board, rookie tight end that I think uh, can rise to be the number one and could definitely help out needing to help out Calvin Ridley so he can 
stay open here. Uh, Lamar Jackson was taken at the end of the fourth round, only the third quarterback off the board. And Julio Jones, Travis Etienne, uh, Adam Thielen taken by my team. Allen Robinson was the other guy I was really heavily looking at, and a little bit of Chris Godwin, which brings us to Mike's pick for round five. Yeah, um, just to comment on the last couple picks here, your pick, Chris Carson, I like Chris Carson. I've liked him for years. Uh, you know, I pride myself on being one of the first people in the room to identify somebody, and, I, and that's what I was able to do with him years ago. I snatched him up in some dynasty leagues, and his problem is staying healthy, so you have to hope he stays healthy. Kyle Picks, I thought that was a little bit of a reach this early, but if the guy wanted him, the guy wanted him. I have him ranked at 69, so, you know, it's, it's another, you know, at least round, if not two, before I have him available. But if you notice, there's a pattern with the tight ends. One went in the second round. Two went in the third round. One. I think this is where people start to get nervous. In my mind's eye, there's only one other... But before I get to that, uh, you know, again, depending on your league scoring system, you know, most most leagues score either four or six points for passing touchdowns for quarterbacks. So that's going to come into play. But, you know, I'm not going to argue with people who take a Pat Mahomes, a Josh Allen or a Luke or Lamar Jackson, you know, a little bit earlier than they would have because they're going to get their guy and that's OK. They'll make up the difference somewhere else. So Lamar Jackson pick not as far reach you know none of those quarterbacks really are maybe just a tad bit earlier as per my rankings the julio jones this is going to be an interesting play this year i'm i'm, I'm kind of interested to see what's going to happen with him and his new relationship on his new team i think he's going to do just fine so i think that's a pretty good pick right there travis Etienne should see the ball a lot they got him lining up in the slot as a pass catcher as well so it's going to be interesting to see how they move him around i had him at number 67 so again just a round early and then adam thielen i could see that pick there that's a good pick alan robinson that's a guy who i had you know right up there with terry mclaurin last round and then chris godwin you can't go wrong with chris, chris godwin he does himself well year in year out at this point there's four my four top tight ends three of them are off the board yeah. number Number five tight end was Kyle Pitts. So at this point, I'm going to have to take, hang on, let me pull him up here because I'm going to take TJ Hawkinson because I think he's the number four tight end this year. Okay. So TJ Hawkinson coming off the board here, as you'll see him pop up in just a second. And TJ Hawkinson taken by Mike. Kyler Murray going after that, a Cooper Cup, Kareem Hunt, a Russell Wilson. So we saw three quarterbacks taken in the first four rounds. Then we saw two taken in the fifth round, which brought us to a Jamar Chase, somebody taking a, a flyer there on the rookie wide receiver who's going to be reunited with his quarterback uh, from LSU, Joe Burrow, in Cincinnati. And then we see Robert Woods go at, shortly after Cooper Cup, which I understand that pick. And David Montgomery, a running back taken here. And then C.D. Lamb, which brings us back to Mike. And I'll pause the draft here, Mike, for you to give some thoughts on uh, what, you, what you take away from these uh, last few picks here. As we saw two quarterbacks come off the board, five quarterbacks off the board so far. And you taking T.J. Hawkinson, which, which uh, nobody took a tight end after that. But we saw a run on wide receivers, Cooper Cup, Jamar Chase, Robert Woods, and C.D. Lamb. Your thoughts on... Chase being taken in round number six, and Chase being taken before Robert Woods and C.D. Lamb. Yeah, you know, I, I again, at this point in the draft, this is kind of like the no man's land. So this is where your draft can be won or lost. So, you know, you really want to make sure you're on your, your game here. And, you know, there's, there's some people, sometimes it's great to know the room. Like, if you know a guy is an Arizona fan, you know he's going to take Kyler Murray probably. I mean, if, if he's a diehard fan like that, you know, if he was a, uh, I, I don't know, uh, trying to think of a college here, uh, if he was a Penn State fan, you could see him taking Miles Sanders. You know, you, you, you can kind of read the room. So depending on where you're at in the draft order, sometimes it's good like, like the play chess. Like if I do this, then they're going to do that, and then I'll do this. So have a couple contingencies in your mind's eye as to you know how you would play it. 
there's there's a couple different things I can do here. I'm not sure I want to go with a quarterback here. Yes, I want to go quarterback, and yes, I want a, a quarterback. But if you look at the half the teams already have quarterbacks, those are very good quarterbacks. I think I can uh, wait at least one more round just based on there's one player who's still available here, and that is Tyler Lockett. I think Tyler Lockett's going to have a heck of a year this year. I like Tyler Lockett. He's always he's always there. He's he's always a guy that you can count on. So I had him next highest ranked. I had him at number forty. So that just makes sense for me. Yeah, Tyler Lockett, uh, a great pick. Somebody that I kind of forgot about after we saw uh, we saw his uh, DK Metcalf going round number two. I thought he would go a lot sooner. So he kind of slipped my mind. My next pick was Mark Andrews to take my tight end because he had fallen here and uh, he was taken right after Mike took Tyler Lockett and then DJ Moore went, who I still think is in a place where I don't trust him enough to draft him. So now I'm looking at my list of tight ends and really not seeing a lot of great stuff left. So I will go with the you know next best available. And so I'm going to go with Noah Fant. But this is not a pick I wanted to make. I wanted to at least uh, grab Mark Andrews here as we came back around. But Noah Fant is who I ended up going with. Uh, Juju Smith-Schuster decided to stay in Pittsburgh. He got taken off the list. And he was another guy I was looking to here if I didn't take a tight end. Uh, Kenny Galladay, who's on a new team with the New York Giants, uh, hopefully will help out Daniel Jones and Saquon Barkley. Miles Gaskin, who Mike and I said go from Mr. Irrelevant to a starter. We said that last year, and he's done that. And then Devontae Smith from from, uh, Philadelphia, a rookie wide receiver coming off of winning the Heisman with Alabama. He is now the uh, the next pick here coming off the board. So that was kind of an interesting pick here. We're seeing some rookie wide receivers go, and not crazy early, but going in this draft, which is kind of interesting. And that will bring us to my pick, which I have uh, two running backs. I have two wide receivers. I have a tight end, and I have – a quarterback, and so looking at what's best available right now, in in front based on this list, you know, James Robinson, who they think will get you know time as well with the Jacksonville Jaguars. But I'm looking at some of these opportunities, and there's one guy that I'm kind of circling here with Denver. I don't know if I want to take him yet, but if I look to uh, some of these other players at the wide receiver position and at the running back position, my gut's telling me to go running back. And so I'm actually going to I'm going to take James Robinson at this pick, and then I'm going to leave a, a few other things here uh, left open. And uh, Melvin Gordon, who I figured would fall a little bit here, not a, not a ton of belief in him. He has fallen here into this round. And Justin Herbert, kind of interesting here after Russell, well, Russell Wilson, that, uh, that the pick – jumped Dak Prescott and took Justin Herbert, which brings us to Mike's pick. And, and Mike, what are your thoughts on what, we, what we're seeing currently right now? Well, you know, it's kind of – one thing you always want to bring yourself to is knowing where the average pick goes. So, in other words, I want to know what the average draft position of each player coming in. That's the beauty of using the, the cheat sheets that I have at the, on my site, Hall of Fame Fantasy Football.com. It gives you the average draft pick. So on an average, that helps me predict what the other players are going to do. So there's times where you can wait till after the turn till it comes back. That's where I find it most advantageous. Well, you know, look, uh, look where I'm at right now. Okay, there's two of the four teams that are after me. There's going to be eight picks after me. So four of those picks one of those might be a quarterback. So I may consider taking a quarterback here just because of the odds, just because of the math involved, not because I'm, Oh my gosh, there's a run. I better hurry up and get a quarterback. You never want to be in, in the middle of the run. You want to start the run when everybody's looking at wide receiver. You want to go running back if possible. Those little things can make the difference in the draft and you can start to dictate the draft. My goal is if I have 100 prospects on my draft sheet, and I'm just using a round number here, I have more than that. But if I have 100, I don't want any of my guys to be below 50. I want to finish 
half the size of the draft. I want to, I, I take, a, I'm old school. I take a physical piece of paper and I have it printed out with my projections and my rankings on it. I have the average draft position next to that as well. So I know where I'm going at all times. It's just a matter of how I want to play it. So while I appreciate the patience here, I'm just trying to explain, you know, what we're doing. So, you know, with that being said, I, I, I'm going to have to take Dak here because I need a quarterback. I'm going to need one. It's not out of line. He's on my rankings at 63, which is, you know, two, four, six, seven. We're on 72, four, six, 77 right now. So I'm ahead of the curve here. Uh, if he's ranked 63 and I'm taking him at 77, that's that's value right there. So I'm glad I was able to do that. Yeah, so Mike going with Dak Prescott, another guy that I think fell in this draft farther than I thought he would and farther than I think uh, will be in, in, you know, in some of the other drafts that we see. Uh, the guy that I was looking to get on the back end coming around is Javante Williams. I'm guessing that the uh, computer is listening to our entire conversation. Uh, DJ Chark... <laughs> DJ Chark Jr., another guy that I thought would maybe fall to me as I looked at him a round or two before. Uh, Odell Beckham Jr. getting taken. He's still left up in the air for me. I don't trust him. He has a few good games, but that's what I see. And Brandon Ayuk, uh, really the guy in San Francisco right now. And then Raheem Mostert, this guy took two San Fran players. Could be that this could be a San Fran fan, kind of you know simulating what, what a fan would look like here to take two guys from the same team. Uh, Aaron Rodgers falls in this round to round number eight at the beginning of round number eight. Uh, Leonard Fournette goes and Chase Edmonds goes, which brings us back to Mike. Yeah, I got an interesting call to make here. I, I do want to comment on the Aaron Rodgers pick. If you notice, I broke that down for you. It was a 50-50 chance, and I think it is slightly greater than that, that a quarterback was going to take be taken after my pick or before it came back, and sure enough, that happened. Oh, well, I'll along with uh, four running backs and three wide receivers. I don't think very many of them were so far out of whack. I think they are about they all got drafted about where they should be. So this is the time I'm looking at my roster. I look at my roster, and I'm like, okay, i got a fairly balanced roster here for at this point in the draft. I'm halfway through the draft almost, and I do have a tight end. I do have, I do have two running backs, three wide receivers. I have a quarterback. So still, I've been focusing on best player available to a fault, but it's worked out for me. So I, I'm, I'm not going to complain. I can go five different ways here and not be wrong, but I'm going to stick with the plan. I'm going to, I'm going to dance with the one that brought me. I'm going to go with the situation that I think is best. I'm looking at wide receivers. I'm looking at seven different wide receivers right here. I think at least four of them, there's no way I can go wrong. So again, I'm just going to go with the highest ranked one. And that was T Higgins. Okay. So Mike goes with T. Higgins here coming off the board. I him ranked at number 49. Yeah, so Mike gets him. Uh, Jamar Chase, somebody went on him early on two rounds before, which put Mike in a situation to get T. Higgins, who I still think is the dominant guy coming into this season, at least, with his relationship with Joe Burrow. But Jamar Chase had one in college, too. Uh, David Johnson being taken off here. Or, pardon me, Deontay Johnson taken wide receiver out of Pittsburgh. So both of the... Uh, which you would consider to be the one-two punch in Pittsburgh, at least for now, taken. And right before my pick, this jerk took <laughs> Trevor Lawrence. So uh, I think it's I think it's high to do that, but they don't have a quarterback. So, I mean, with them – go ahead. Yeah, let me speak on that for just a second. Yeah. Uh, Trevor Lawrence, outstanding, top prospect without a doubt. But this is the NFL, yeah. okay? And even Peyton Manning threw more – interceptions and touchdowns are just about even his his rookie year and Peyton Manning considered one of the top quarterbacks of all time oh oh, oh by the way he's still 0-4 against the Florida Gators but neither here nor there I think Trevor Lawrence is going to have an outstanding year that's just a tad bit early I have him ranked at number 129 and we're at pick like 80s 90s somewhere around there yeah I think it was too high of a pick they didn't have a quarterback and I guess you know they have high hopes that Trevor Lawrence can get it done I'm going to take this guy. I know that uh, he was injured last year, but I call him hands. I covered him at SMU. He's got great catching ability, and I'm going to give him a shot. I can't believe I'm going Denver twice, but 
it's above a rookie, so I'm going to give him this opportunity. And that's and I think it's great value in round number eight is I'm going to take Cortland Sutton. And then – Thank you. And then uh, Ronald Jones going from Tampa Bay after. Jalen Waddell, the other guy I was looking at coming out of Miami, but he is a rookie. And I also looked at Jerry Judy, but was surprised to see that Cortland Sutton was still here. I still think he's the dominant guy. And then Kenyon Drake uh, going. He is now in Vegas backing up Josh Jacobs. There's still – some other guys out there at running back that I would have taken before a Kenyon Drake, but that's what we see uh, coming here. And and in my picks, I have three uh, wide receivers right now. I have three running backs, have my quarterback, I have a tight end. So you're looking at kind of best available right now. And Chase Claypool is out there with Pittsburgh, which is a guy that you know could give you some speed and some help in that respect. There's obviously a bunch of quarterbacks that are still out there. James Connors now in Arizona and the thought that he could be taken over as the dominant guy. Uh, Chase Edmonds and him could be working together, and I would imagine they will be. And, you know, looking at some of the other pieces at wide receiver, I'm going to go with a guy who, in my gut, I think I should get. I, I missed on DJ Chark. I think this guy, he's got speed, he's got a young quarterback, and he's got an ability to really have a breakout season. I'm going to take LaVisca Chanel at this pick. All right, Homer. <laughs> so, gotta do what you gotta do at this point and then chase claypool no, goes that's, next and that's in line i have him right at 78 you know that's in line it's just i also have two four six eight ten players ranked 54 through 78 who aren't named lavisca chanel who are all available and there's only one of them is a running back so they're all wide receivers and you know i'm, I'm thinking about going running back here just to balance out my roster I think I'm great at wide receiver right now. Uh, you know, and, and even though there's some value, you got to remember what I have on my projections and my rankings is not what everyone else has. Right. So when you use my stuff, you're going to see players going. You're going to go, well, why did that player go? They're ranked way down there, and I have all these other players on my ranking sheet higher. What? That's right. That's what we do. We set it up so you can win. We set it up so you can have that rounded team that's going to take you to the championship with minimal moves. You're not going to have to look for a trade because a lot of people don't like trades unless you're in one of those trade-happy leagues. You're not going to be in a situation where you're going to be scampering because of injury because we're taking care of that in the way I rank the draft, the way I prepare your draft ranking sheet. Again, hit me up at the website, HallFameFantasyFootball.com, or find me at Wing Fantasy Football, the Facebook group. Again, I'm, I'm going to give you the names and the rankings of these wide receivers that I have, and then I'm going to take this running back here. Um, and again, I'm, I'm going a tiny bit outside of my direct order, but at this point in the draft, that's what I'm going to do because I'm going to start filling position need. I'm still going to use the ranking. I'm going to make sure I'm not that far off, and I am. Because this running back is ranked 73, and we're on pick, what, 96 here. So I'm still doing good. These other wide receivers I still have ranked ahead, unless I've missed and didn't scratch one. Jamar Chase, I have him at 54. Yeah, yeah Chase, Ayuk, Ch Chase at 60. Yeah, yeah, Ch yeah Chase and Ayuk uh, both coming off here back-to-back, -back, which uh, – which, which definitely, I mean, I don't know what you think about that, Mike. Uh, Chase going higher than T. Higgins. I kind of brought it up a little I bit. See, I yeah, see. I missed that one. Yeah, no worries. I missed I up there as well. Hang on. I still got others here. Beckham, is he? You know, he's gone. Yeah, Beckham's gone. Brandon Cooks. Cooks is still there. Yeah, Brandon Cooks. I have at sixty-five. Robbie Anderson. Yeah, Robbie's still there. I have him at sixty-seven. DJ Chark. I have him at 71. Uh, Char, yeah, Shark came off uh, before LaVisca Chanel. He came off in round number uh, seven, and then uh, that Jeez. provoked me to take LaVisca Chanel. Well, that was right where he needed to be taken. And did I miss Tyler Boyd? Tyler Boyd's still there. Okay. Well, good. I got, I got my stuff straight at least. I'm going to go uh, and make sure I didn't miss this guy already. Nobody took Mike Davis yet, right? No, Mike Davis is still there. Yeah, that's who I'm taking here. I have him ranked 73. Again, getting him at 96, that's a tremendous guy you pick at this point. I still have uh, three, four wide receivers up there ahead of him and wide receivers that should have been taken at 54, 67, and 72, and 67. Yeah, so there's still some value out there. 
Let's see here. Let me go ahead and pick him. So Mike taking uh, Mike Davis here and Mike Davis coming off the board. And so with Mike Davis coming off the board, that's going to provoke a bunch of other picks to come through here. Uh, Brandon Cooks next, Tyler Boyd. I said the computer was listening to us. Uh, James Conner uh, in Arizona. Mike Gusecki taking. Uh, after I took Noah Fant, there was a drop for almost three full rounds at the end of this past uh, this past round, the ninth round. Mike Gusecki taken, and then Marquise Hollywood Brown going. Jarvis Landry, Irv Smith, the tight end out of Minnesota. Now with Kyle Rudolph helping. Uh, Evan Engram in with the Giants, and Zach Moss is taken at this point, which is a little bit interesting here. Uh, Zach Moss uh, being picked up here. I'm going through the ja- draft just to just to make sure I didn't miss this name, but I do not believe that Devin Singletary, and he hasn't. Devin Singletary has not been taken yet, so Zach Moss was taken ahead of him in this draft. Mike, thoughts on that as we step forward to your next pick? People think he's a bigger back. People think he's a power back. I just haven't seen enough yet. I think it's going to be like a committee situation, and if one of them gets hurt, the other one will be there. So that might be the one handcuff situation you want to make sure you get yourself involved in. But, you know, don't think too far. Don't don't overdraft. You know, it, it is what it is at a certain point. And in a 10-team draft, you have room to breathe. It's when you're in 12, 16, 22, 32 team drafts that each pick could make or, or kill your season. What we're going to do in our draft, your season won't be killed through, through our draft. I promise you, when you follow my rankings, I promise you, you're not going to get killed at your draft, even if you make some mistakes. But. The difference is you're more likely to win with this ranking, more likely to win with this system. So a Zach Moss thing, I could see that going either way, and that doesn't bother me either way. I'm not I'm not worried about anything. And looking at my ranking sheet at this point in the draft, I got a lot more receivers available than I do uh, uh, running backs or, or other positions. So let me see. Let me pull up this receiver. Let me make sure he's still here. Let me do this. Yeah, I'm going to take Robbie Anderson. I don't see how I can leave him out there. I have him ranked number 67. He had an outstanding year last year. I know the new quarterback in Darnold, but I think that's going to play right into their hands. He's got a Temple coach, and he's got a quarterback he used to play with. So how can you not take Robbie Anderson there? Yeah, you know, you look at, uh, like you said, the connection at Temple and Matt Rule, a guy that I got to know in his time at Temple. Uh, now going into his second year as the head coach of the Carolina Panthers. He is reunited with Sam Darnold, who, like Mark Sanchez, the Jets took away his best weapons, in my opinion, and then got rid of him like he was doing something wrong. Well, Robbie Anderson is back reunited with Sam Darnold after Robbie spent a year in Carolina, and I think that that'll bode well potentially for both of them. Uh, Debo Samuel, I've kind of let him fall on my list. He gets picked up here in round 10. Somewhere around 10, 11. I'm okay with that. Uh, Will Fuller, the fifth, is now in Miami. If he stays healthy, he's good, but it's an if. It's a big old if, and that's that's the issue that puts him where he is right now. I'm gonna take I'm gonna take this guy, and uh, I think he's gonna be a nice one-two punch with. Well, there's two guys I'm looking at right now at running back, and one of them I can I'm not gonna name since I come back here quick in the draft, and I know the computer reads my brain anyways. But I'm going to go with this guy in round number 10. He's somebody who I said last year to watch out for. They spent a high draft pick getting him in the second round, and now he doesn't have anybody standing in his way to be the number two guy and have some goal line carries and different pieces to the offense, and that is A.J. Dillon, the running back in Green Bay that is going to be right behind Aaron Jones. And so uh, Dallas Goddard's taken or pardon me right after me Curtis Samuel is taken now a wide receiver in Washington Joe Burrow taken which means that there's two quarterbacks for our uh, first team here Lamar Jackson and Joe Burrow Joe Burrow bailed me out had some 50 point games 40 50 point games and last season before getting hurt Dallas Goddard and Rob Gronkowski start off round number 11 and I'm going to go for the guy that the computer didn't know I was going to take for once I thought about going with this rookie, but I'm not because he's on the Jets, but I will go with this rookie because I do believe 
Unfortunately, in San Francisco, running backs haven't stayed that healthy. And even when they have, they've used more than one. And they used a pick on this guy. So I'm going to go with Trey Sermon in round number 11 and take him, the rookie running back out of San Francisco, as opposed to Michael Carter, the rookie running back out of the Jets, who I like. And my buddy DeAndre Smith was his coach when he was the running backs coach at North Carolina. And I do think that Michael Carter's talented, but being on the Jets, between the Jets, basically what it came down to is talented rookie, talented rookie at running back. San Francisco, Jets, who's in a better position? And I think, you know, both teams are in need of a leader in the backfield, but the Jets are a team that has a lot of stuff to work on. San Fran made it to a Super Bowl a couple years ago. So I went with Trey Sermon based on breaking it down in that way. Two guys that I think are talented. Basically what I'm saying is if Michael Carter was in San Fran and Sermon was with the Jets, I'd be going with Michael Carter. So it was more of the Jets situation and, not wanting to have one of my roster spots taken up by a Jet. so And that's not because I have no respect for them. It's because I think their team has a lot of issues and a lot of question marks, and I don't want that to trickle into my fantasy team. So with that being said, Tom Brady gets taken in round number 11 after I, my pick. Matt Stafford, great value, I think, here. The 11th round as the second quarterback to the team that took Justin Herbert, and now we have it paused on Mike. So... Uh, Mike, after seeing you take Robbie Anderson, we've seen three wide receivers go, three quarterbacks, two running backs on my part, and nobody else took a running back, and then two tight ends. What are your thoughts on these last few picks? Yeah, you you know, if you look at the way the, you know, we're playing against the automated system here, but if you look, you know, in the the past, what, uh, two, three, in the past six picks, three of them were quarterbacks, and they were all backup quarterbacks. That doesn't speak to me as drafting wisely. That tells me that you're not sure of your first quarterback pick. Yeah. That tells me that maybe you think you might have picked that guy early. Or maybe you're just using a magazine that somebody had printed in, in May, and that's what, that's what you're using in out-of-date information. All my projections and rankings are up to the minute, the latest thing. So I'm looking at this, and I'm like, there's no way I'm taking a backup quarterback here. I'm riding or dying with Dak Prescott. If Dak Prescott has a crap beer, if he goes out there and snaps a twig, so be it. I'll address that situation there. But I'm not going to draft the guy now to have him sit on my bench because it's a single quarterback league. It's not a super flex league either. So I, I just I, I'm glad those guys took quarterbacks there, especially those quarterbacks. And I'm I'm good with that. I'm looking for a one week fill in. I'm looking for a guy who can be there to pick up the pieces. And that's just way too early for me to do that at this point. These this these next picks are going to be leap to faith. Again, you can win or lose your draft here. I have a couple different options that I'm looking at, but I'm going to take the guy because uh, I'm trusting we're using the PPR scoring here because that's what I that's yeah. oh, that's what I'm using. I'm drafting PPR anyway. Yeah. Um, but I'm gonna I'm gonna go with Damian Harris here because I think he. He catches the ball well out of the backfield. I know it's, you know, Belichick, and you never know which guy's going to be the guy, but that's what you get, and that's what I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to deal with that. I'm going to roll with Damian Harris. I think he's going to do well. Yeah, and you know, Damian Harris in round number 11, uh, de- looking like he is going to be the starting option. So to get a starting running back here later on in the draft, uh, looking good with a lot of running backs having been picked, He's a guy that I looked at, but because New England breaks it down so often amongst a plethora of running backs, that makes it tough. Uh, James White, another guy who's lasted there, who really is uh, huge in PPR. So he's another person to take, especially now in these rounds, 12, 13, 14. Uh, Jalen Hurts gets taken after that, Mike and Ryan Tannehill, two starting quarterbacks on their teams in reality. But these teams, uh, one of them already has a quarterback, and the other one, this is their first. So round number 11, Ryan Tannehill, not a bad bet in round 11, going to uh, team number eight here on our on our uh, mock draft for the 2021 fantasy football season. Uh, the first quarterback that they took off the board, they tried to take care of everything else. They got Ryan Tannehill, not bad here by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, other Other teams, like you were saying, taking two quarterbacks, you see that Mike and I have not done that we've we've looked to really position ourselves in good standing with depth at running back and wide receiver 
And so four running backs taken in round number, or four uh, quarterbacks taken in round number 11, and everybody taking a backup quarterback in those three out of four, except for the, the team that took Ryan Tannehill. Uh, Ian Thomas out of Washington, or Logan Thomas, pardon me, out of Washington, a tight end taken. Michael Carter, the guy I told you I toyed with in this round, that rookie running back of the Jets, he goes at the end of the round. Hunter Henry was one of the next picks I was going to make. I thought he was going to drop to me in round 12, and I was going to grab him as my second tight end, and that did not happen. Michael Pittman, another guy I looked at, Michael Pittman Jr. coming into year number two, but now with Carson Wentz as his quarterback in Indy. Robert Tanyan going to Green, you know, at Green Bay, had a pretty good season last season, uh, helped me at times, was was rendered invisible other times. And Devontae Parker, who really has not shown up in Miami as their dominant wide receiver, hence why they have Will Fuller the fifth, and hence why they drafted uh, Jalen Waddell. So uh, definitely uh, not bad to get him in round number 12, but I wouldn't pick him at all. Mike, it's your pick now. What are your thoughts on a round that we just saw four quarterbacks go, three out of four teams taking their backup quarterback, as you had mentioned before, and now we're seeing a little bit of a run on tight ends. Well, yeah, and use that situation to your advantage. See, I, I identified a trend. It, now, if you're in a, in a computerized draft and you're drafting with people, usually the computerized draft is going to go off the rankings right there in front of you unless the owner has gone in there and pre-ranked their own stuff. But you can watch what they're using. So I can use that to my advantage. Let's say I was thinking about taking a quarterback at this point for some reason. I would have already known that those other guys were likely to take quarterbacks. So I use that to my advantage. So I'm like, well, if I'm going to take a quarterback and I don't think that, you know, these guys are going to take this quarterback, I think these guys are going to take these other quarterbacks because according to the rankings on the computer in the draft room, it says they should be taken. And sure enough, they were. I can come back and use that to my advantage. That's why I went with with Harris before because I wasn't in the market for a quarterback and at this point I'm going with my rankings and I'm using the rest of the room's rankings against them that's important that you know that you got to remember if you're using my system not everybody knows what you have but you know what just about everybody else has in the room because I also give you average draft position so at this point I'm just taking the best possible receiver I'm sorry best possible player if you notice we have uh, what are we going 18 rounds yep. so there's one two i got one two three four five picks before i'm even going to think about a defense or a kicker now you watch in the next two rounds you're going to start seeing defenses and kickers come off the board and it's going to be super crazy i'm not going to do that i'm going to stay steadfast i'm going to take the next highest ranking guy that's there regardless of position at this point because my starters are rounded out already i'm going to go with michael gallup now if you notice i do have dak prescott so if that, every time Dak Prescott throws on to Michael Gallup, hey, I'm double the money. Now, I know it's a crowded situation there, but I still, I'm still not sold on the tight end there in Dallas. But I am sold that, well, you know, C.D. Lamb, Amari Cooper, I'm sold they're going to be able to move the ball with Zeke Elliott. And I think that's going to open up some opportunities for Michael Gallup. Yeah, you know, and Michael Gallup, but, you know, round number 12, and not a, not a bad pick at all. Uh, with seeing Amari Cooper kind of fall and C.D. Lamb go later as well. Uh, Todd Gurley. And, Excuse me. I had Mike, Michael Gallup ranked at 88. So yeah. I'm getting tremendous value there, like pick 120-something. Yeah, you know, it's a great, great value here. Uh, Todd Gurley uh, in Atlanta still, eh, you know, that's one of those things that I would definitely stay away from. I wouldn't touch that no, with. He's not even on the team. He's not right. there. Yeah, so. Davis is the guy. That's why I took Mike Davis before. Yeah, and so, so it's it's still so saying. The computer's using an outdated <laughs> ranking system. Which See? is totally so fine. <laughs> you know, thank you thank you to, to the computer. Uh, for those of you that are using Hall of Fame Fantasy Football.com, you would not make that pick. I'm seeing this going. Did they re sign him? Because uh, Mike and I didn't think that, you know, we said, hey, if this year doesn't work out. He may be done for good, and the year has not worked out. Uh, Naheem Hines going. But what did work out on my behalf is I'm going to get one of my rookie guys out of Arizona, and I'm going to get what I consider to be tremendous value at pick 120-something, and that is Rondell Moore, wide receiver out of Arizona in round 12. I will gladly take him in this round. 
Yeah, I like Rondo Moore. He's, he's way underrated. You know, this is a guy who's big. He's fast. He can make he, he can make plays, and that's that's what they're bringing him in for. And I think you're going to see a lot of splash plays with him right away. I'm not saying he's going to be Randy Moss right away. You know, when I'm excited about a player, it's relative to the other players in their same position. Doesn't mean they're going to be the MVP of the NFL. It just you know you you get tremendous value at a certain point with some players in some points in the, in some drafts, and you know. That's where we're at. Yeah, so we're looking at uh, you know another, two more running uh, wide receivers taken off the board. Antonio Brown. I mean, it's round twelve, but I still think that that's high. I think I think he could be you know at the last rounds here because he's the third. At best, he's the third option at wide receiver. But if when you put in Rob Gronkowski and OJ Howard, he might be the fourth or fifth option for Tom Brady. Uh, Corey Davis going, who's now with the Jets, coming from Western Michigan. A year before my my guy Tim Lester returned there, uh, Zach Ertz still in Philadelphia allegedly was on the trade block, and he was taken here in round number thirteen. Matt Ryan taken as well. I'm going to go ahead and t- there's two guys I'm looking at at tight end, and I told you I wanted Hunter Henry to be my backup one, but there's a starter that could still be a top five guy, staying healthy, getting out there, and with a healthy Saquon Barkley help on God willing the offensive line, and now actually wide receivers of note. I think this guy could definitely see some openings, and I think this is really great value in the 13th round. I'll take him pick 133, I think is what it is. I'm going to take Evan Ingram. I like Evan Ingram. He's the 16th tight end on my rankings here. You know, I, I, I think overall he's number 136, so not that, you know, you're not that far off. My my only reservation with that is, you know, you got to consider where he's going. You got to consider the team around him. You know he's been injury prone the past couple years, and you got to wonder: is that going to affect his play? Has he lost a step? The team did bring in Kyle Rudolph, but Kyle Rudolph's on the backside of his career as well. There's no real rookie threat there, and Evan Ingram has been, uh, you know, a solid player for many years here. You know, you look, you see that uh, Tyler Higby went right after that. Now, Higby's in an interesting situation because he's almost running solo now. When he runs solo, as opposed to those two tight ends, he, he's going to bring up some points. So that's a good pick right there, uh, Higby right there. I have him right there number uh, 119 and going up and down through my through my rankings here i'm gonna step out i know we talked about somebody taking zach moss before this is where i take devin singletary i take devin singletary here because i'm sold he's still the starter or a committee split at worst and in the 13th round i could do a lot worse than De- devin singletary yeah so you know and looking at looking at this and where uh, things are kind of shaping up. We'll talk about this in a second. I want to go to my my position here and, you know, looking at my draft where I'm at right now. Uh, one quarterback I have, so I could look at taking a backup in this situation. I have Josh Allen, and so jo- who I consider to be number two behind only Pat Mahomes. Uh, Derrick Henry and Chris Carson at running back as well as James Robinson A.J. Dillon and Trey Sermon as my running back. So when I look at you know my list here, I've got a bunch of running backs. Wide receiver wise, Calvin Ridley, Adam Thielen, Cortland Sutton, LaVisca Chenault, and Rondell Moore. So five there. I have my two tight ends. I still have to pick up my kicker and my defense, and I have three bench spots here. So I can use one of those on a quarterback. I can obviously bring in another running back or another wide receiver. Uh, Some people have three tight ends. I find it difficult to do that unless there's an incredible steal toward the end of the draft. There's still a lot of value out there at wide receiver that I'm seeing right now. Guys that could be number twos, guys that could rise to number ones, guys that could really uh, make some hay in fantasy football this year are all still available. And Mike and I have a rule of thumb. You see that my kicker, which is here in purple, is empty and my defense and special teams is empty. Mike and I have a rule. Whatever your draft is, if it's 14 rounds, it's round 13 and 14. If it's 18 rounds like this, it's round 17 and 18. We do not pick kickers and defenses until the end of the draft. If you want to do that, you can do that all day. We will let you pick a kicker early. We will let you pick a defense early. Some people take a defense in the drafts I've done. They'll take a defense in the fourth round. They'll take a defense in the sixth round. So when I'm building up my wide receivers, I may be looking at my tight end. I'm building up my running back, you know, 
stable, there's people taking a kicker or taking a defense. Defenses get taken very early, and a defense, the chances of a defense or a kicker saving your team that week are highly, highly, highly minimized compared to your backfield and your receiving core. So Mike and I have had a rule since forever, and many people go against that rule, and we're totally fine with that. So with that being said, since Mike took Devin Singletary, uh, we saw Tony Pollard, the backup to Zeke Elliott in Dallas going. We have seen Deshaun Watson getting taken here in the 13th round if he even plays. T.Y. Hilton going very, 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 very late and well after having uh, Michael Pittman go in the draft. Or I shouldn't say well after. The guy actually took both. So this could be a Colts fan, so to speak. This could be simulating a Colts fan. So uh, not well after, but you know, a full round after Michael Pittman getting, getting taken before T.Y. Hilton, which shows this person's belief that T.Y. is going to play second fiddle potentially to the rookie. I don't know if that's going to happen just yet. Justin Fields goes in round number 13. And keep in mind, Justin Fields, the rookie quarterback for the Bears, went before Baker Mayfield, as well as Kirk Cousins, Carson Wentz, Ryan Fitzpatrick, and Tua Tagovailoa. Uh, We saw Kenneth Gainwell of Philadelphia go at running back here, another guy from Memphis's giant, giant, beautiful uh, zoo of, of running backs. And I say zoo because of the Memphis Tigers. But uh, every single season, it seems like they're sending a running back to the NFL. We saw McCall Hardman go here in round number 14. Hard to draft him at all. I kind of would leave him on the waiver wire and free age, and definitely in free agency. Because you in Kansas City, it's really Tyreek Hill, Travis Kelsey, and then everybody else, it could change every single week. Uh, Mike Williams never really has shown out with the Chargers, but he got taken. And then we see Detroit's running back get taken here, Mr. Uh, well, Jamal Williams, who used to be in Green Bay. And uh, you see that I took A.J. Dillon five, uh, four rounds before, took A.J. Dillon, who's now the number two, arguably, in Green Bay. Jamal Williams going here it, to this, this team that decided to take him. And uh, kind of interesting of a pick there. To take that. DeAndre Swift, the starter in Detroit, went in the end of the uh, f- third round. And now we're seeing all the way down to round number 14 that, uh, that Jamal Williams is going. Jamal, one of those guys that I never really feel like caught on. He had some good moments here and there, but I feel like those were few and far between and they were a while back. Uh, in my opinion, he, he has not been relevant in fantasy for the last couple of years, but he gets taken here. So, Mike, uh, what are your thoughts on all of this? We haven't seen a kicker or a defense taken, but Lord knows you and I will not be the first to do that. So, Yeah, I don't like seeing, you know, that. But it is what it is, you know. I'm, at this point in the draft, I take, I take a step back and I take a look at my bench. And I go, okay, let's see what I got. I've been picking the best available player, more or less. And look at that. I got a rounded bench. I do. I, I don't have all wide receivers. I don't have all running backs. I have, let's see, one, two, three running backs, two wide receivers. So I could go either way here, whichever way I choose. I may step out a bit here. There's a wide receiver I'm very interested in taking right now. But just a few ticks below him is another running back. And this is PPR scoring. He's a PPR running back. And it kind of handcuffs me, Antonio Gibson. And I'm talking, of course, of J.D. McKissick. You know, I'm not the big handcuff guy, but there's times where if I can and I can round things out, why not take another running back who's a handcuff in the 14th round of 18 rounds? That's where I'm going. I'm going with J.D. McKissick. Quote of today's show: I'm not a big handcuff guy. That's got to be. It's got to be. Eh. The, it's got to be the quote. Got to be the quote of today's show. So there's no fifty shade. There's no fifty shades of soft guy. Here on these other players that had gotten taken, Deshaun Watson. Yeah. You know, you, you got you got to have some big ones, my friend. You, and thank goodness that's a second quarterback for that team because this is a chance he may not play this year. So you got to keep that in mind as well. So, yeah. you know, the other picks are pretty much right where they need to be. Nothing outlandish. So uh, sorry to take up all the time. <laughs> no, 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 you're fine. There's no 50 shades of Safka because he's not into handcuffs. So looking at uh, looking at uh, J.D. McKissick, like you said, you took him as a handcuff here. Johnny Smith, I looked at him. 
I'm still kind of on the fence a little bit about him, which is why I ended up taking Evan Engram instead, because Evan Engram is the dominant guy, and he's not really there to split time with anybody, arguably on paper going into the season. Gus Edwards, I'm okay letting that go just because of the situation in Baltimore. Their best running back is Lamar Jackson, and that's not me calling him a running back. I'm saying that running and passing the ball, he is a phenom in both, and getting you over a 1,000 yards a season in both is nothing you know to uh, frown about by any stretch of the imagination. So I, I just, uh, you know, I liked Gus maybe a year ago, and this year I've, I've kind of learned my lesson to stay away. I have five receivers and I have five running backs, so I could go really anywhere I want to go now. There's some number two guys that I think could really be something special. I'm not going to go with a third tight end in this moment. Um, there's, there's some guys that are left out here that I like. There's some chances that I can take, and I think that those chances are better served at wide receiver right now. And so, you know, there's a guy like Marvin Jones that could be a number two in Jacksonville. Amon Ross St. Brown is in Detroit. Uh, Elijah Moore is with the Jets, Russell Gage. And so I'm going to actually go here, and I'm going to take a shot with Darnell Mooney. I'm going to take Mooney uh, coming from Tulane, and the number two guy out of Chicago could really turn out to be something special. In round number 14, I'm okay with him being my sixth wide receiver off the board. Uh, Darnell Mooney, because I'm not 100% sold on Allen Robinson, uh, getting all those touches, and I don't think that he will. I think it'll be split, and every quarterback has their guy. So could start with Andy Dalton and turn into Justin Fields, and we'll see where Mooney goes from there. Uh, Amon Ross St. Brown was another guy I looked at, and Elijah Moore, the computer reading my brain again. I looked at Latavius Murray, and I looked at Tariq Cohen, and Latavius, you know, I like him. He's been on the show here. Uh, Fantasy football-wise, it's tough. I mean, to have him round out, then that's good, but one to two weeks a season, really, fantasy, uh, could he be giving you any numbers worth merit? Tariq Cohen, you know, another guy that I just don't want to deal with in Chicago anymore. I have a chance here to do a, a few different things, and there's enough guys out there then I'm going to let one of these things go for now, for the minute. But I'm going to look at taking my final running back. And there's one guy I really want to take, but the situation is not ideal. So I'm going to take Daryl Henderson. I'm going to take a Memphis guy here. And uh, Daryl Henderson going to be with Cam Akers. I don't think either one of them has decided who the starter is yet, no matter what the depth chart may say. So I'm going to take Daryl Henderson because falling to me this late in the draft, another guy out of Memphis uh, saw him play live when he came to the bounce house at UCF. And so getting him in round number 15, nothing to frown about. Again, uh, filling out my running backs, you know, and and I like my running back room. I got Derrick Henry, Chris Carson, James Robinson, who I think will get time, A.J. Dillon, Trey Sermon, and Daryl Henderson. So I got two dominant starters, and then I got guys that will probably – uh, be accents, maybe could take over in that sense. And then, you know, wide receiver-wise, uh, Kelvin Ridley, Adam Thielen, Cortland Sutton, all starters. Abisca Chenault could take over there. Uh, Rondell Moore, I think, is a, a nice sleeper for me. And Darnell Mooney, I think, is a number two. So I'm really not looking at any of these guys being a third option at wide receiver on their teams, except for maybe Rondell Moore to start off the season. But that could change. So I'm good with that, and that's left me in a position where I have one more bench spot to fill with whatever I want, and then the kicker and the defense and special teams. Uh, Since I drafted, looking at this, uh, we saw, like I said, Amon Ross St. Brown, a rookie, going to Detroit. We have seen Latavius Murray and Tariq Cohen go. Elijah Moore, a rookie, to the Jets. And uh, Daryl Henderson, my pick. Phillip Lindsay falling all the way down around 15 as he is a running back in Houston now with David Johnson in the and what, what seems to be the uh, graveyard of potential starting running backs that, have, that, that all go to Houston and try to work together three or four of them to make one back, it feels like, every single year. One, one fantasy back out of three or four guys. And we see our first kicker taken off the board here in round number 15 with Justin Tucker, my favorite kicker in the NFL. And I never get him because I never, again, draft kickers until the last two rounds. 
yeah, use that to your advantage. You see the kicker starting to go off the board. There's a couple other guys in the room here. Maybe this happens in your draft. I've seen people leave the draft. They get their starters and they leave the draft and they're like, yeah, whatever. Don't do that. You want to take advantage of the situation here. You know half of the next picks are going to be kickers and defenses. I'm going to make sure I'm on the bottom half of that. And at worst, I'm probably going to get – I'm probably still going to get a top 10 defense, a top 10 kicker based on my projections. But theoretically, mathematically, I'm going to get a good one anyway because there's only 10 teams. There's 32 teams in the NFL. So, you know, not everybody's projections are going to be right either. So with that in mind, i got two more bench spots. I usually, I'm okay with going with one tight end if he's a top tight end. I think I got a top tight end in TJ Hawkinson. He's the number four tight end on my ranking. I have him. Dak Prescott, I'm okay with him. He's probably not going to, you know, let me down. But at the same time, 33% of the quarterbacks end up not starting all games in the NFL the entire year. So I'm going to back this guy up, and I'm going to take a chance here with Tua Tago Viola, I think, too, is going to have an outstanding year this year. I think he's going to take a step up. I know he's been injury-prone in his college and high school days, but, hey, he's my backup. And at this point, if I end up cutting him and picking somebody else up, so be it. I'm not afraid of this pick here taking Tua. Yeah, you know, nothing nothing wrong with, with taking Tua at this time in the draft. Another guy, there's a lot of quarterbacks for the guys that took two there's still a lot of quarterbacks out there and there's a lot of talent still left out there too I mean like Mike said about kickers 32 teams there's 32 quarterbacks but there's a bunch of guys that are still good out there uh Tua Tagovailoa got taken and then Baker Mayfield uh, taken shortly after you Mike so somebody kind of heeding that call there and uh and putting themselves in a situation where now they have Aaron Rodgers who we don't know his situation and Baker Mayfield who isn't clear on what quarterback he's going to be uh, in his career yet, I don't think. So two question marks at quarterback. I would not want to be that team. And then, you know, Russell Gage in round number 16, or pardon me, uh, 15. You know, there's another guy I looked at out of Atlanta because someone's got to step up, but I think that that's a crowded room with Calvin Ridley and what's, you know, what the expectation uh, is of him. And obviously bringing in Kyle Pitts, who I think can become the number one target. Uh, Austin Hooper, speaking of uh, Atlanta guys, he's in Cleveland for year number two. I would have left him off at tight end. He's not proven at all. Chuba Hubbard's another guy I looked at, but this is only in a situation where Christian McCaffrey uh, were to get hurt. I think he might get some goal line stuff, might get some big back stuff, might give Christian McCaffrey a break with the team maybe being a, a little bit nervous and wanting to uh, you know, take maybe 20 carries a game or 15 a game and take a couple away from him just to keep him healthy throughout the season, especially coming back from injury. I think, you know, Chuba Hubbard will get time, but at the same time, I was kind of sitting here like Daryl Henderson, touchdowns to Chuba Hubbard's. I think Daryl could get more because he's done more, but, uh, you know, and he's and he's not a rookie. He's coming in with some experience, but he is a guy I looked at. Uh, Alexander Madison, I looked at him too, backing up Dalvin Cook. Sony Michelle, I'd leave him off at this point. Uh, it looks like a wasted pick by the Patriots who typically don't take a skill player in the first round, and they took in Keel Harry uh, within the last couple of years, and he's been hurt, hasn't shown himself. They took Sony Michelle right before that, and he hasn't really shown himself either, even when healthy. Uh, Henry Ruggs, another guy I looked at, 16th round, good value for that because he's the number one wide receiver in Vegas right now, and he's taken in the third to last round. Uh, Nelson Aguilar of New England, another question mark here as we try to figure out when Mac Jones will take the reins, how Cam Newton will be used. So I stayed away from that as well, which brings us to your pick, Mike. After taking your second quarterback, where do you go from here? I'm going to go with a guy that's ranked number 116, and it's also going to help balance my bench as well. I have uh, four running backs, three wide receivers, and a quarterback. I have one more spot, and I'm going to go ahead and utilize that with Marvin Jones. I think Marvin Jones has an outstanding opportunity with a rookie quarterback. It could be that calming sense. He's going to know what it's like to be a rookie quarterback and have a veteran presence on the other side. He's going to help his teammate along in his quarterback he's gonna he's he, it's either a boom or a bust and in the 16th round how can i go wrong is the way i look at it yeah you know and so that brings me to a place where again mike and i are leaving our 
kickers and our defenses until the end. I have an opportunity to look at the quarterbacks around the NFL. There's a lot of guys that are out there still. Uh, ben Roethlisberger, my how the mighty have fallen. Uh, Big Ben over the years, he's still down here, uh, still available. And there's there's some other guys that are available too. Uh, Trey Lance is available uh, behind uh, Jimmy Garoppolo. And, you know, in, in reality, in fantasy, you know, some people regard him as above him in this place. Uh, Kirk Cousins is still there, kind of a, an old faithful type of feel. Carson Wentz, if he stays healthy, he's playing in a dome half the season. So that's that's good. You know, and, and Ryan Fitzpatrick is here, too. Uh, Ryan really doesn't have anybody behind him in Washington to contest him. And Daniel Jones with the Giants. So this is a tough pick for me. And I got Josh Allen already. Uh, Trey Lance is enticing for me, but I'm going to go with someone that I believe can last throughout the season. It's between the Magic and it's between the Cousins, and I think that based on just age, I'm going to go with Kirk Cousins as my backup quarterback in this situation. Yeah, how can, how can you go wrong with, you know, he's that new Mendoza line. He's the... And where I used to consider Andy Dalton was a Mendoza line. He was always in that 16 in that high teens ranking area week after week. He was a good bye week fill in. I think that guy now is Kirk Cousins. There's, there's some interesting stuff going on with quarterbacks with every year you've seen a handful of quarterbacks come in. Then you're going to have a third of them go down for more than one game. So it's important to have a backup quarterback. You know, don't cost yourself the draft. Don't cost yourself a higher ranked player by far, but you know, if it's close and you want to take the backup quarterback that's not always a bad way to go especially in the third to last round yeah you know so uh my Kirk Cousins getting him in the third to last round I'm I'm good with it Uh, my backup quarterback as you can see I have filled out my bench so it leaves me with a kicker and a defense and special teams at this point Uh, after Mike took Marvin Jones Jr. a guy from Jacksonville who could rise to be the number two guy on the team could rise to be the number one guy. Really, all the juniors are fighting for a spot. Uh, Marvin Jones Jr., DJ Chark Jr., and LaVisca Chenault Jr., who I picked up. And so Mike and I both got a Jacksonville receiver in this with Trevor Lawrence coming into town. Uh, Le'Veon Bell going to Kansas, you know, uh, Kansas City, second year there. He goes in round number 16. I'm okay with that. It's value. It's getting somebody late toward the end, but I don't expect much of anything from him. Again, Daryl Henderson, Chuba Hubbard. There's other guys that I think will get more of a uh, more touches, more opportunities uh, than him. Uh, we saw three kickers going round number 16. So after Justin Tucker, they waited a little while. Uh, Harrison Bucker of Kansas City went. Uh, Blankenship, a uh, Rodrigo Blankenship out of Indianapolis, uh, he went. Greg Zerline, who uh, you know, if you get more points for how far they can boot it. Uh, for me, anything that's 39 yards or less, you get three points. For 40 to 49, you get four in my leagues. And for 50-plus, you get five. Uh, Zorline's one of those guys that can boot it from 50-plus. So that's a good pickup for the team that was the first overall pick in this snake draft. And, you know, but still Mike and I uh, wait for our defenses and our kickers. And we saw Mark Ingram go, Tevin Coleman, Ingram in Houston. Again, the graveyard of what could have been. There's a bunch of running backs trying to fill that out. My how Mark Ingram went from a great one-two punch, arguably maybe the best one a couple years ago with New Orleans with him and Alvin Kamara, then he goes to Baltimore, and he is rendered obsolete, and here he is in Houston and trying to find his footing with a bunch of guys there that uh, were, were – I mean, Philip Lindsay was a starter, Mark Ingram was a starter, and David Johnson was a starter. Uh, Tevin Coleman, who's now with the Jets, who came from San Francisco, went to be – or part of me uh, – well, yeah, went, came from San Francisco with Kyle Shanahan, was with Kyle Shanahan before that in Atlanta, and now is a New York Jet – so uh, some of these guys I just don't think are worth picking up. I think they're worth a free agency look during the season if there's an injury or if they start showing up. But uh, that leads me to my pick, Mike. What are your thoughts on what's happened since your Marvin Jones pick before I get ready to take a defense or a kicker at this point? Well, you know, I, I saw Lev Bell go in there, and, I, you know, that raised my eyebrow. I saw three kickers go, and, you know, that's going to be my last pick. So four kickers are off the board already. Almost half the teams have already taken kickers. All top five of my defenses, I'm four picks, I'm three picks away from picking. Three guys are going to pick that I'm going to pick. My five top defenses are all still available. 
So I'm going to get a top five defense. I'm probably going to get a, a top three, three or four defense because who knows what the computer and, and 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 yourself are going to pick. I don't, I you know, I don't know what 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 uh, what direction, but I feel safe by the math. Yeah. The kickers, oh, kickers score a lot of points. Yeah, go ahead and take one of them in your first round then. You know what I mean? It's going to happen. It's just like the quarterback situation. Some of them are going to go down. You're going to make changes. Your team, that's the great thing about fantasy football. Your team is not in cement in most cases after the draft. Usually what happens is you have some time. You have some time to adjust. You can drop players, put players on the injured list. You can trade players and so forth. So at this point in the draft, if you feel like, oh, I'm going to miss out on this guy, I'm going to miss out on that guy, take a breath. If you're using our system, continue to stick with the plan. I'm going to take my defense next, and I'm going to take my kicker last. Yeah, and that's what I'm going to do as well. Defense, then kicker. It just is the way that I used to go. It's the way I think I should go. You know, Washington's got some stuff to write home about on defense. Tennessee has only made their defense better over the years, and the AFC South should be concerned about that. But I'm going to go with the defense that won a Super Bowl. I'm going to go with Tampa's defense. I don't think I could lose with any one of these three. And, you know, there's also a few other ones you could look at, but – I'm going to go with the Bucks defense as my defense that I'm taking here. And then we see uh, running back uh, Hawkins out of Atlanta go here. I, I don't think that that is a worthy pick of anything. Marlon Mack, who's all but a forgotten man in Indianapolis. I think he'll get some touches, but it's Jonathan Taylor's team after such a nice rookie season of over 1,000 rushing yards. So uh, looking at this right now, Mike, we're, we're up to you. I don't think the picks taken after me really did anything to affect you or anybody else in a negative way but my bucks defense has been taken which leaves you with a bunch of pretty looking defenses here for your 17th round pick yeah you you know i want to speak on that hawkins pick that's not that bad because mike davis has had opportunities to be the guy you know in carolina but he's coming in you know, from from rep one as being the number one guy, Hawkins a rookie. I think he'll be able. They're going to want to get him on the field, see what he can do. If he has a pass blocking down, he's going to be a threat to Mike Davis. But you know, at this late in the draft, why not take a chance like that? Michael Mack is just an insurance policy as well. But that same computerized pick took Lev Bell, who's not even rostered on a team right now. You know, Mark Ingram, I think, is a stretch. Devin Coleman's a stretch, so your buck defense pick, that's the number one defense on my rankings. I'm going to go with the number two defense on my rankings here, and that's the Pittsburgh Steelers. So again, saving my my defense to my second to last pick, I got my number two defense. So don't sweat defense. And may the record state that I was the first person to draft a defense in this draft, which will probably never happen because when we do our drafts on site on location at the Wildcat, like I said, somebody always takes a defense in the fourth round or the sixth round or the eighth round or the tenth round, something like that. So uh, I don't know if I've, if I've picked a defense first in a decade, but uh, let, the, let the record state that I did. So Mike takes Pittsburgh's defense, and then we see a run on kickers. We see uh, Young Hoku, my dude. So love the name uh, from Atlanta. The kicker goes. Uh, Bass goes from Buffalo. Sanders goes from Miami. And Robbie Gould, the you know old faithful, goes from San Francisco, and now we're seeing a run on defenses: Jets, Patriots, Jaguars, Texans, leaving a bunch of other good ones out there. So I don't really understand that. Which leads us to Mike taking his kicker. Mike, oh my goodness, there's kickers that were taken. What will you ever do with your life? If only there were 32 teams with kickers you could trust in because in this in this world's nfl if you if you miss if you miss a couple field goals or an extra point or two in a week or two then you may not be on that team anymore so you know it's a very tough job to get and so they got to do what they're asked to do mike i don't know how you will ever survive having to see so many kickers off the board with eight kickers off and only 24 teams to choose from what will you do yeah, I'm going to go with the number three kicker on my projection. So, waiting the last two picks, I got my number my number two defense. I'm going to get the number three kicker, and that's Will Lutz. I think he's going to have an opportunity to put up a lot of points with the Saints again. So, Mike going with Will Lutz and the rest of the league going here with defenses, Saints and Giants defense. That leaves me to my kicker. I can either go with Matt Prater, Mason Crosby, 
There's a bunch of guys out there that I may like. I'm going to go with the guy who has to kick them field goals for Tom Brady because we know they're going to be scoring points. I'm going to go with Ryan Suckup of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and that will leave the Chargers and the Broncos defense there. So that is where they go. So that is our draft, and I'm going to I'm going to make a copy of this so that we have we have the draft set here. So we created a, a copy here, and I'm going to go and uh, make sure that we can keep this draft. Go ahead. Are you making a copy? Yeah, you know, I'd like to do this two more times if we can. This is basically July 1st, basically June, the end of June. If we did this at August 1st and again on September 1st, yeah. we can see movement, we can see growth. There might be some injuries, there might be some changes. Guys are going to get cut. Things are going to change. So, we, you know, when we're doing this, if you're watching this in September, that's great. We'll probably still get, you know, there's probably some still pertinent information here. Don't be spooked about, well, I only have one kicker. I only have one defense. What am I going to do? Well, you're going to drop somebody. Yeah. You know, when your defense is on the buy, you, I got a great defense. You know, I'm going to drop somebody. And it may not be the Pittsburgh defense. At this point, maybe somebody gets dinged up or maybe they're not having the year I thought they were. Maybe somebody's beat them out for a roster spot. So don't worry. There's plenty a year. That's what waivers are for. That's what ad drops are for. That's what trades are for. You're going to be fine based on the system we're using. Yep, and I got our entire draft here uh, saved. So I'm looking at it right now, which is uh, which is pretty cool. So I got I got all this uh, set here for us. And uh, Mike and I will take a step aside for a fast break. And we appreciate you being here. Inside of the Fantasy Football Power Hour 2021 Fantasy Football Mock Draft, Brought to you only by the fantastic team at the Wildcat Sports Pub, 3680 Milton Avenue in Camillus, New York. Open seven days a week for indoor and outdoor dining and for takeout and delivery. Call 315-487-2222. That's 315-487-2222 for the Wildcat. We'll be back right after this on Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora from inside of the Cafe Kubal Studios. Carvel DeWitt, it's what happy tastes like. Do you know why? Because we make ice cream. Creamy, rich, flavorful ice cream. Not yogurt or iced milk like some of our competitors. Ice cream. Fresh, by hand, daily. For the calorie conscious, we have something new for you. Our new Carvel Ice. Same great flavor, creaminess, and texture of our regular ice cream with only 35 calories an ounce. So whether you want an ice cream cake, flying saucer, dasher, carvelanche, hard or soft ice cream, we will satisfy your craving with our fresh, handmade, regular, or new Carvelite ice cream. Carvel DeWitt. It's what happy tastes like. Happy Cabal offers same day local delivery of our products, offering no delivery charge for Onondaga County. Shop CappyCabal.com for fresh roasted coffee beans, cold brew, travel mugs, and all your essential Cappy Cabal needs. Cappy Cabal, coffee for the soul. The Wildcat Sports Pub in Camillus, New York, is located on 3680 Milton Avenue in the Home Depot Plaza. It is your family-friendly sports bar and restaurant. Folks, some sports bars aren't family-friendly. Some family-friendly restaurants are not sports bars. The Wildcat Sports Pub in Camillus, New York, is proud to be both. It is that marriage that you've been looking for for years. The Wildcat Sports Pub is your home base for your sports bar and restaurant needs, games for the kids, indoor and outdoor activities, and enough things on the menu to come back every single week and get to try something new. They're open Sundays from noon to 8 p.m., Monday through Wednesday, 11 a.m. to 11 p.m., and Thursday through Saturday from 11 a.m. to midnight. For reservations and party information, call 315 315- 487-2222 for the Wildcat family-friendly sports pub and restaurant. In these unique times, 
There are those in our community that give us a sense of normalcy and positivity. Pizza Man on 50 Oswego Street in Baldwinsville has been here for you for over 35 years and is here now. Call 315-638-1234 or order online at pizzamanbville.com to bring those familiar tastes into your home. And remember to come see our monthly on-site broadcast centered around the community and our Baldwinsville bees. Pizza Man in Baldwinsville. Any way you slice it, they are always here for you. I'm George Townsend of Honda City with some good advice from buying a new car. The true cost of owning a new car is determined by the appraised value when you trade it. No vehicle appraises higher than a Honda. Next, look for low APRs and deep discounts. You also want low maintenance costs and great fuel economy. That's why my advice to you is to buy a new Honda. Looking for you, visit our Honda Certified Used Car Center. Honda City, 7140 Henry Clay Boulevard, Liverpool, or HondaCity-CNY.com. This is Jimmer Sikowski, owner-operator of Chick-fil-A Cicero, 7916 Brewerton Road in Cicero, right in front of the Home Depot. I had a deep feeling that God wanted me to do something bigger with my life and to help people, help others. I kept putting Chick-fil-A in my life, and I realized as I was going through the franchise selection process that uh, positively impacted the lives of others is really core to what we do here at Chick-fil-A. First of all, it starts with the food. The food is brought in fresh daily, and we bring in local produce, we prepare to order in the kitchen, we hand bread our chicken, we hand spin our milkshakes, it's it's great food, it doesn't taste like fast food. I I think the second thing is is the way people feel when they come in a Chick-fil-A restaurant, it's different. We we try to treat people with intentional kindness here, which is very different and deeper than good customer service, and so I think it feels remarkable for most people to come to a Chick-fil-A restaurant. And then lastly, the impact that we try to have in the community is very different. It's a big part of the expectation of every operator of a Chick-fil-A restaurant is that they're actively engaged in their community, they're a leader in the community, and they're, they're making a difference. When they realize that what we're striving to do is to shine a little light in their life, that's a very, very different experience than you will have at any other quick service restaurant. And it's that remarkable experience that I think people will emotionally connect with. Welcome back here to... Of fame fantasy football.com and of course of our joint venture on facebook winning fantasy football the group that y'all need to join for free and it's very easy to do you go to you go to facebook you click on winning fantasy football and all of a sudden you've joined our group so make sure that you do that today so you can talk with us all the time about fantasy football inside of the fantasy football power hour you know we do this every wednesday from 10 a.m to 11 a.m eastern time but we took over all of wake up call today for the Fantasy Football Power Hour takeover. And we did this today because we wanted to do the mock draft and really give you a feel for all that uh, all that we got to do here today, which was a lot of fun. And uh, really wanted to deep dive into the world of fantasy football in this mock draft. So we're excited we got to do this for you. And uh, Mike and I have the entire uh, draft all set up here which is which is awesome. It's all set and done. It actually looks like stickers of when like you go to do the draft yourself and you get that draft board and you put the stickers up. So it's a, it's really cool, and we're going to be adding that here in a second. But, uh, Mike, you were saying before the break that what you would like to do is here we are uh, right around the beginning of July, the end of June, uh, doing this mock draft. You think we should do it two more times as things develop and come about and just see what it looks like. Obviously, the computer will do different things, and, uh, you know, there might be players that have moved. There may be, uh, you know, unfortunate, and hopefully not, uh, if there's injuries that happen and whatnot. So you want to do this two more times before we get in. So you want to have Mock Draft 1.0, 2.0, and 3.0 for the people out there. Is that what you were saying? 
Yeah, absolutely. I think it's important. I, you know, there's a lot that can change in the next 30 days. You know, there's injuries that can happen. They're going to happen. Statistically, it happens. Somebody's going to, you know, damage a knee or something. Even in this world where we're, we're, uh, you know, there, there's not practices. There's not practicing in pads. Teams hardly tackle anymore. I've seen it on in games last year because teams don't tackle anymore. There were guys who thought a guy was running out of bounds. They let up. There's a guy who, oh, they thought he was going to go. You know, he thought he was going to drop the ball. They give up on plays. You got to see the play through the whistle. At the end of the whistle, if you haven't hit anybody, you got to ask yourself, what happened? What did I do wrong? If you're a defensive back or a linebacker, and at the end of the play, you haven't been on the ball or the guy that has the ball, you got to ask yourself, what did I do wrong? So, you know, there's a lot that's going to change. Some older players on some rosters may not make the cut. That's going to create space for the young guy. How does that affect your draft? So we're not going to put you in a position where you're running out buying a magazine. Yeah, what the heck's a magazine anymore, right? But what I'm saying is there's some sites out there that will give you information that's been up for months. We're going to give you the most current information possible based on the situation as it is right now. If you're drafting now, you can use this mock draft. If you're drafting in a month, guess what? In a month, we're going to have another one. And we're over, a little over two months away from the season. Guess what? We're going to have a third one. So you're going to get the most up-to-date way to go. You don't have to copy my team. As a matter of fact, it's going to be hard to copy my team because it was in the middle of a draft. It's, you know, one of, you know, 180 players taken, or, you know, each time it was up to me. So the bottom line is this. We drafted a mock draft based on our rankings today. In a month, we're going to do it again. And in two months, we're going to do it again. Yeah, you know, and, and I'm excited about the opportunity to be able to to do that and to be able to, you know, have this come through the way that we're, you know, that we're hoping for it to come through. So I'm very much looking forward to being able to to do this. And, uh, and the one that actually popped up here is not the correct uh, end, end of our draft. So I'm going to take that off. But... Uh, but yeah, I mean, we, we've had the opportunity to do this mock draft today. This is Wake Up Calls Mock Draft 1.0, and then we'll have 2.0 and 3.0 to get you set. Because like Mike said, you know, injuries do happen, uh, trades do happen, things do happen, movement happens all the time, and we have to be prepared for that. So we don't ever want to be stale here on the show, and we're not going to be, and that's how The other thing that's good about doing these these mock drafts is it gives me an opportunity to really uh, get a chance to uh, get a feel for you know how I do in the draft you know um, you know how how did I react to it uh, how did I uh, how did I respond you know and and I think you know getting Derrick Henry was was a good piece of my draft I think uh, looking at my wide receivers knowing that first option at wide receiver was one guy was a three and that's Rondell Moore because he's a rookie. He could rise to a number two. It could be a slot guy, really good sleeper, good flex. I think he could amount to be. So uh, wide receiver wise, I had ones and, and twos in reality, which is good for me. Uh, my running backs, I think I could have done better, but I think that uh, Chris Carson and Derrick Henry are a nice one-two punch. AJ Dillon, and you know, it's it's guys that if they really pan out, AJ Dillon, Daryl Henderson, you know, uh, James Robinson, and how much he's going to be used in the offense. So that's those are kind of more question marks, but I I think that there's you know I think Carson and, and Henry healthy can carry me, and those guys don't have to do too much. You know my third or fourth running back I may play from week to week. Uh, Josh Allen I'm really fond of. Kirk Cousins getting him as late as I did I think is good. Uh, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers defense I think was really uh, helpful for me. I uh, just won a Super Bowl, and so I'm good with that. And you know tight ends I. I, based on how our draft went, they went early, and so I waited a little bit longer. I would have liked, I mean, Mark Andrews was my next pick, and he was taken in, in that round right before me. So I still think, you know, he's arguably a top three guy. So, you know, uh, to see Kelsey go, you kind of expect somebody to go high on Kelsey. And I had a chance to get Kittle, and I didn't take him, and he went. But I thought Mark Andrews would come back around. Noah Fant, eh, you know, I'm kind of kind of on the fence about him, but I think uh, I could have gotten either one of the New England guys at one point, and I think that there's value there. 
So if you fall into a place where you don't get the top three, top four, you know, then then I do think, uh, you know, the New England guys, Noah Fant, a uh, good value to get. And, and, and I think Evan Ingram, I mean, he could be a top five tight end if he's healthy. So, you know, having him as my backup is not bad. So all in all, I think I did well. I think I navigated against a simulator that was very smart in most cases. Some cases, question marks, but in a lot of cases, I think they were smart. And so, I mean, I, I think I like my team all in all put together. I think between Josh Allen and Derrick Henry and uh, Kelvin Ridley and some of those guys there, I mean, I could have three, four guys, five guys that could really carry my 10-team roster from week to week. So I'm good with my picks. I think overall I did well. I think there's places I could be better. I think running back, it could have definitely been better and a little bit better at tight end. But I like my receivers. I like my move on Josh Allen after Pat Mahomes went. And, yeah, so I think all in all I would I would probably give myself a uh, – a low end A, a high end B, maybe it, maybe a B in, in, in places to work, maybe a B plus, maybe an A minus B plus. What, what do you think about yours? Uh, I'm happy. I'm I'm looking at this, and I you know I'm looking through the first ten rounds, and my pick in the tenth round was the fifth pick, so that puts it at pick uh, basically 105. I I guess is ten. Yeah, ten. Uh, no, I'm sorry. I was. Uh, yeah, 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 because it was coming back that way. So I have 105 picks. Those 10 players, the lowest one I had I had ranked was 73. So that means there's 27 guys that I was able to, to go around because my, my projections are different than other people's. My rankings are different than other people's. And I'm not afraid of that. As a matter of fact, I'm excited about that because I know what my history is. I know what I do when I'm using this system. So whether you're using my system, whether you're using somebody else's system, find one that you like. Find one that you feel good about. Find one that's going to deliver. Find one that's going to guarantee results. That's what I try to do at my website, Hall of Fame Fantasy Football.com. And that's what I try to give every time. I talk to a potential client or a friend or somebody on Facebook or somebody in the Facebook group. I'm not afraid to give out information. When you go to my site, you're going to see rankings for everybody, whether they're a rookie, whether you're dynasty, whether you're PPR, whether you're standard scoring. I'm not afraid to put all that stuff out there because I know you're going to do business with me in other parts. I have the adjusted explosive index available, which will help you rank the wide receivers, not worrying about what team they're on, but worrying about their skills set their speed and so forth and that's been proof positive that helps tremendously if you're in a dynasty or keeper league but again what i was saying before i'm 73 is the bottom ranking in my top 10 positions that was mike davis so that means that i got out of the top 105 73 of them were in my they were my top three so i'm 25 percent ahead of everyone else in the draft at that point with my starters so i feel good it's like i got an extra pick every extra every four rounds or so however you need to look at it get whatever system you're comfortable with follow that system and stay true to it what people i've i've, I've had customers in the past they call me up and they go mike uh, you know i drafted me you know we, we did everything just like you said but you know, I, I recently dropped so-and-so and picked up so-and-so, and I'm like, well, why did you do that? Well, I thought, well, that was the problem. You thought. You know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, if you have a question about it, if there's a question at all, see me. Ask me questions. I'll help you the best I can. Uh, you know, I'm not a Houdini. I'm not, a, you know, a guy who can see the future. But pretty scary how close I can get at times. So, you know, I'm, I'm proud of where I'm at. I'm proud of what I'm doing. And I'm proud to help you win your championship. Results are guaranteed at Hall of Fame Fantasy Football.com. Yeah, coming from Mike Sofka, Hall of Fame Fantasy Football.com, our joint venture of winning fantasy football on Facebook. Join us today, the Winning Fantasy Football Group. You just go to Facebook to that search Facebook bar and type in Winning Fantasy Football and click join. Mike, as always, I appreciate your time. Check him out at HallOfFameFantasyFootball.com. We'll be posting our draft results, and you'll be able to look at those on our website and on social media. In the meantime, Mr. Sofka, I will find you on YouTube.com backslash WakeUpCallDT as where everybody will find all of our fantasy football shows, and we'll be adding a plethora of them to WakeUpCallDT.com and sharing them on our social media so that you can get ready for your draft. We have done every single 
quarterback situation in the AFC and the NFC, every backfield of the AFC, every backfield of the NFC in separate shows, every receiving core, wide receiver, and tight end of the NFC and the AFC. And now we have our Mock Draft 1.0. All of this information crucial for you, and we will be sharing that on wakeupcalldt.com. There will, there's a, there are obviously already up on youtube.com backslash wakeupcalldt, and they will be added to our social media at wakeupcalldt on Facebook, at calldt on Twitter, and at, at wakeupcall underscore dt in the story on Instagram. We'll put up some stuff as well. So, Mike, thank you as always for your incredible effort and everything you bring forward at hallofamefantasyfootball.com. And now that we have a library for people to go back and look at and listen to, I truly appreciate the fact that we are more than preparing people for their drafts. And by preparing you, we're preparing ourselves. So it's all, you know, one hand helps the other, so to speak. And here we are at the end of June, and we've been talking to you about preparation for your draft since, I don't know, January. So you have no excuses. And as always, Mike, I have no better partner. So thank you for all that you do with fantasy football and in general. Awesome, Dan. Thanks again for the opportunity. I look forward to speaking with you again soon. Sounds good. That coming from Mike Sofka here of Hall of Fame Fantasy Football dot com and we are getting set here to round out the rest of the week on wake up call with dance tour we'll take a, another step aside here where sports meets that thing called life you'll hear from some of our great partners here in central and upstate new york and then we're right back at it inside of the cafe kubal studios right after this Cafe Cabal Mobile Cafe brings the cafe experience to you. We'll roll out to your neighborhood or office, ready to serve our locally crafted espresso bar to our loyal patrons. Inquire at CafeCubal.com. Cafe Cabal, coffee for the soul. Pa's Kettle Corn and Popcorn Factory, located on 201 7th North Street in Liverpool, is home to over 40 flavors with more than 200 flavors in their total wheelhouse. Sky's the limit for this sweet and savory Central New York company. Keep it local at your parties, fundraisers, wedding showers, baby showers, and more by calling 315-450-MA-PA. That's 315-450-6272 for popcorn bars with custom flavors and colors at your upcoming event. Make sure to visit them on 201 7th North Street in Liverpool, New York. And for more information, go to maandpazsnacks.com. Ma and Pa's Kettle Corn and Popcorn Factory. How corny are you? The Mill House Market, located on 3790 New York 13 in Pulaski, New York, is worth the drive every time. Make sure you download their app on the Google Play or Apple App Store, and you'll have everything at your fingertips from their entire menu to directions from wherever you are to get to 3790 New York 13 in Pulaski, New York. So on that app, you can look at the whole menu, see what's in each of the things you're looking at ordering, and get directions on how to get there from whatever location you're currently at ingrained in our community and ingrained on our taste buds there is nothing like the millhouse market and from their homemade breads to their desserts to their brick oven pizzas quinoa bowls rice bowls and the sandwiches named after the families that helped to settle today's pulaski they are absolutely positively worth the drive every time every tuesday through saturday from 7 a.m to 8 p.m and on sundays from 7 a.m to 3 p.m they have their drive through open grab and go window to get your food and be on your way they also have the opportunity for you to go inside and sit in their indoor dining and their bistro menu changes every weekend so you can go in there on the weekends and get something totally different off of their specialty menu that changes every week and of course you can go in their general store and pick up local honeys local syrups as well as local clothing local children's toys and uh, local spices and whatnot so make sure you head in there as they support the local community themselves and go beyond themselves to help others Avicoli's on the corner of Route 57 and Wetzel Road in Liverpool, New York, is the home of our exclusive Liverpool Warriors athletic program show. Once a month, on-site, on location, you'll find Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora at Avicoli's. And, of course, Tuesday through Sunday, you can find yourself at Avicoli's from 
lunch, dinner, and drinks Tuesday through Sunday open for you with the pizza more casual side as well as their fine dining, their bar, and their outdoor restaurant. They give you four restaurant experiences in one plus takeout delivery and catering by calling 315-622-5100. Avicoli's, it's safe to say, has got you covered. You can also go to myavicoli's.com. Canine Camp Dog Daycare and Canine Campground Dog Boarding are your homes for your furry-loving friends. Look no further than their daycare and their longer-term dog boarding when it comes to needing help with your little one or your big one that you have in the house. They care about our dogs as family. They treat them as such. At the campground, they have their own cabins, and so they get to go to sleep and have some space to themselves. Then they can come out in the common area and play. There's turf outside and plenty of games and different things to jump on and whatnot. And they also bring each dog through a process to make sure they have the right temperament so that they play well with others. So they definitely go the extra mile to make sure that your dog is cared for, and every single week they are here for us, even on holidays. So thank you to Canine Camp dog daycare and canine campground dog boarding pb and j's lunchbox on 663 old liverpool road in liverpool new york is the new home of the food truck that you love so very much it goes all throughout central and upstate new york and you follow that pb and j's lunchbox truck because you basically are lifted off the feet by the scent and you follow the award-winning grilled peanut butter and jelly as well as all of their amazing things that they offer there at PB&J's Lunchbox. And so you can find your way over to them now on 663 Old Liverpool Road in Liverpool, New York. Open Monday through Saturday from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. daily, serving breakfast, lunch, and dinner all throughout the day. Victory Sports Medicine and Orthopedics, there for you on 791 West Genesee Street in Skinny Atlas, New York, minutes from Skinny Atlas Lake, and a beautiful, beautiful place to go. When it comes to wanting to get better, be it through rehab and physical therapy or surgery or whatever it may be, they are there for you to take care and preventative care as well. They're there for you to help you and do all that they can at Victory Sports Medicine and Orthopedics. One of the things that they do that has gotten me going back every single year is they listen to their patients, they tell you what they're doing, and they care. Dr. Mark Petropoli, at the top of all of this, is a doctor that truly will sit with you, talk with you, and help you understand what's going on. He's hired a team that does the exact same thing. They know you by name when you walk through the door if you're a reoccurring patient, and I really just value how they treat people. And, I mean, how they treat people in getting us better and how they treat people in general and how they speak to you and everything they do. So Victory Sports Medicine and Orthopedics, I don't have to tell you, but I will. For almost a decade, I have trusted them, and they are absolutely worth your phone call. 315-685-7544. It's 315-685-7544. is only mock draft 1.0 my goodness 2.0 coming up next month 3.0 after that we will get you ready for your draft and we will be with you all the way through every wednesday 10 a.m to 11 a.m eastern time you have the fantasy football power hour proudly presented by the wildcat sports pub 3680 milton avenue in camillus new york open seven days a week indoor and outdoor dining and open seven days a week for takeout and delivery 315-487-2222. That's 315-487-2222. We appreciate you. We thank you for being here. We love doing the mock draft with you. We can't wait to do even more with you after this. So please take care and stay well this Wednesday. We'll see you in July, God willing, tomorrow morning. Plenty of stuff coming up on Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora. And we're rounding this week with a special called Leave It on the Mound, which will be featuring local pitcher Bryce Zaccaro of CNS, which I can't wait to share the stage, share the room with him uh, coming up here in just a couple days. So a lot of great stuff coming up on Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora. NBA playoffs come full, you know, come into uh, full focus with Dave Paziak tomorrow. We obviously still have the annoying moment of the week, proudly presented by Carvel DeWitt. We have lead with Juanita Ward presented by Chick-fil-A Cicero and Chick-fil-A Clay as of tomorrow. We're adding Chick-fil-A Clay to the fray, so welcome to the family. And, of course, uh, we'll have the opportunity to give you the top dog of the week, proudly presented by Canine Camp Dog Daycare and Canine Camp Ground Dog Boarding. So 
a lot of good stuff, a lot of fun to be had. Amazing, amazing time, as always. So thank you for being here. Thank you for your listenership. Thank you for your viewership. Thank you for your support, bookmarking, and subscribing, wakeupcalldt.com. Thank you for your liking at Wake Up Call DT on Facebook and clicking follow on Twitter at CallDT and on Instagram at Wake Up Call underscore DT. In the meantime, and as always, God bless, no stress, do your best. I'll talk with you soon.